Hey there, my name is Tim Hello, and I am a coach for all things love, dating, and social anxiety. And in this video, I wanted to go through seven social anxiety exposure strategies that completely changed my life. So I've been doing this for maybe 25 years now. I mean, it was around between around 2005 to 2008 when I really threw myself into this this area of my life and tried to figure it out and fix it. And I tried out a whole bunch of different things, like absolutely loads of stuff. And I've just pulled out here seven of the things that I did that really, really made a huge difference. And I want to share those with you so that maybe you could think about trying them. Now, one thing to point out here is this video is not for people who have really extreme anxiety. Uh, this is not the video for you. You would need to have some aspect of courage and some capability in a social environment. But without further ado, let's go into those strategies. Okay, so the first strategy that will make an absolutely huge difference to your life um, is basically doing sales jobs. And the reason I put this first is because you can get paid to do it. So, I mean, what is better than improving and overcoming your social anxiety, improving your social skills and getting paid to do it? I mean, it doesn't really get better than that. Uh, now, obviously, sales is it's not for the faint of heart and the intensity is very high. Um, but with that said, so is the learning. Um, now, in my case, I actually tried three different sales strategies, three different sales jobs. So let's have a look at those. So the first one that I started off with is I started off with like a phone sales job. Um, and if I remember correctly, I was doing sales calls to sell like an electric bed for old people. So it was like the bed was flat. And then you push a button, it goes do 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 do, and you'd be able to sit upright. It was it was an awful product. It was an awful company, and I absolutely hated hated the job. I hated it, and the reason that I hated it is because basically we just had like a list of people to call. You know, we had like these leads that we had to call, and most of the calls you would be calling them up, and they just they weren't interested at all. They'd be like, "Why are you calling me? I told you not to call me." And some of them were angry and like upset. Um, so it was it was torture that one like I, I did it for maybe like only four days or something but despite that I did still learn quite well a great deal from doing it um, I realized as well that my my phone talking ability at the time was just not very good and uh, it, this was a long time ago so these were back in the days when like we were doing online messaging but it, it's not like how it is now but either way that was that was one style or strategy of sales job that you can do so this is another one that i did um this is a uh, door-to-door -door sales so this was a real wall wolf of wall street environment that i walked into when i when i started this one so basically i got hired to do door-to-door -door sales selling a satellite dish satellite tv in the uk uh, and uh, we would basically like jump on a train each day and go to a different region and then walk to each people's houses and just literally walk up to them and try to sell them and um, yeah so every morning i'd walk in and it'd be like this sort of pit sales pit and there'd be like all these men and women and we'd all have to cheer each other on it just like the wolf of wall street uh, and then they'd have like these techniques and these strategies and it was it was um it was again it was it was difficult and it was intense but it was i learned so much from doing door-to-door -door sales i really did I think one of the the major things that I got from it was this this idea of the law of 100. And the law of 100 is that if you knock on 100 doors, you might get 99 no's, but then you'll get one person who is waiting for you, literally waiting for you to come and like because they wanted what you what you were selling. And I and I tested it and I found it to be absolutely 100% true and it was mind blowing. I was like, wow. So it's like, you know, you could spend the day knocking on doors and everybody hates you. They're just like, why are you here? And then I would meet this one person and they'd be like, come in, come in. I've been waiting for you to come. And I'd be like, this is just, I just had no words. It was incredible. And it, it really transformed the way I see social interactions. And also, you know, as I've said here, it requires a lot of endurance and a lot of persistence. And a lot of the salespeople were very sort of stressed, like Taipei people. And uh, there, a lot of them were smokers. And I, I remember actually I got quite stressed because I remember one day I was um, in the early days, I was 
I walked into a store and they had a nurse there and she took my blood pressure and she told me that I needed to go to the hospital because my blood pressure was so high. And I was like, no, I don't need to go to the hospital. It's just this, this job, like I've only just started and it. it's like, I'm out of my league. Um, but yeah, so anyway, door to door sales, like again, you can get paid doing this and it's, it's definitely something that I got a lot from and I would recommend having a go at. So the next one that I did, um, this was a charity fundraising. So basically I would, uh, I would stand in the street. Uh, we would travel between cities in the UK. And I think I did this in like 2008. We literally all get in a bus together and we go stay in a city. And then in the daytime, we go into the town center and we talk just to people over and over and over and over again. I literally talked to 400 people a day doing this job, 400 people every single day, like in my job. And uh, the fundraising that I was doing was I was raising money for homeless shelters of homeless people. So it was like a really good cause. Um, but yeah, I mean, this was really up my alley because I'd already spent like a couple of years before that doing like um, dating approaching. Um, so I really wanted to do this. And uh, yeah, it was it really lived up to it. It was and again, it was not easy, though. Um, and, and the main thing about this that I learned was was about energy, managing your energy, because if you're in the street all day, and you have to somehow provide energy to people and keep them engaged. And that was understanding that, learning how much, how important high energy is if you want to have a good interaction was, was just mind-blowing and life-changing for me, like absolutely life-changing. But more than that, there was just so many things that I got from this job. So, and I only actually did it for about three weeks because it was just too hard. It was, it was like really intense. Uh, and I remember the, the actual owner of the company did like a mystery shop on me and um he had a conversation with me and he admitted to me that you know like a lot of people don't stay in this unless they really genuinely want to help homeless people and for me like i wanted to do it because it's good but i wanted to do it for me as well and and i and again i just got so much out of it it was incredible like absolutely life-changing and so i recommend you do something like for sure like after i remember after i did this job i I could go to bars and, and approach women and it was absolutely no problem whatsoever. It was, it was just not a big deal anymore after that. And the thing about these, these, uh, strategies is they last, they last forever. You know, I did this stuff like 20, almost 20 years ago now, and it's literally lasted me these skills. They, I've never really had to work on it again too much. I mean, I, I have done some top ups as you'll see here. So like I went on to all the stuff. So this is the next one that I recommend solo travel. The first time I left the country was 2011 and I came to Asia. Uh, and back then, you know, there was no smartphones. There wasn't any maps. I had no clue what I was doing. Like, and I remember the, I got off the plane and couldn't find my hotel. And it was terrifying, absolutely terrifying. And I fell asleep on a bench because I was so exhausted because I couldn't find my hotel. And then I woke up to an army guy pointing a rifle in my face going, you get up, get up. And I'm like, holy shit, I've never seen a gun in my life, you know, from the UK. So it was terrifying. And, uh, but that really started like my, my solo channel travel journey. And, um, yeah, I spent two months away that time. And in that time I was alone for most of it actually, but I did meet a few people, but just being in a different environment was completely and utterly life-changing. And it gave me space to look at my life. And I ended up starting businesses from that. And it, again, it just, I set up, I wrote a plan, like a 10 year plan while I was there. And it, again, like I ended up carrying it out because I had the time and the space to do it. So that, that's one thing I would say about solo travel is you need to go somewhere where you don't speak the language, where, where it's not a native English language. Now, Thailand, I mean, especially today, like it's not really a thing, but definitely where their primary language is not English, that's much better. And uh, again, like, I think you should go for two months. I, I used to go for two months and then yeah, I just started extending it longer and longer and longer. And then eventually I just, I'm, I'm now at the point where I'm not really living in the UK um, because it just, it changed my perspective on everything, my entire world and entire reality. So this one, um, now obviously this is more dating focused. Um, and again, like these are all fairly intense, but they, they're intense for a reason. And that's that they will literally completely and utterly transform your life for the better forever, like for the rest of your life. And this is no exception. You know, I, I've got two, um, two times I did this on my YouTube channel. You can look this up once I did it on my own in, in uh, Manchester in the UK. And then when I did that challenge, I met a girl and while I was on that challenge and then we went to Vietnam and then I did it with her in Vietnam. And so it's just absolutely, utterly mental. 
Um, but yeah, the, the, the thing about the 30 day challenge, and I really see nobody doing it, but it, it is really one of the easiest, simplest, cost effective ways to completely change your life. So basically you just dedicate two hours of your day to go into the local town center. Now, obviously you do need to live uh, near a populated area, uh, but two hours every day minimum and you just try to approach people and there's certain techniques and practices that you can do for that but generally what happens what i find is the first two days are really difficult because you're hitting the facing this wall uh, where you're just really anxious and you're just really conscious about people looking at you but then after those two days because you've made a 30-day commitment you're like okay i have to last the entire three de 30 days and then it, eventually after two days it falls away and then then you just get into the work and again it's just absolutely life-changing i recommend everybody try it uh so the next one um so these days this is not so popular but i did one I did one like 2008, I think it was. And really, I didn't need to do it because I'd been doing so much of my own at the time anyway. And those, these were the sort of glory days of this kind of thing anyway. But I decided I would go to London and do one of these boot camps with a professional because I wanted to see if it was any different than what I was doing. And what I found actually is that it wasn't really that different. It was just a lot more intense. Uh, but I think, again, like, you know, as I say, a lot of these are intense, but I think being able to survive and thrive under that intensity is really important in social settings. Um, but that's why, again, I say like these, these are not for beginners, these exercises, these strategies. If you have severe anxiety and you can't even leave the house, can't even talk to someone, then obviously you're not going to do this stuff. Um, and even on the bootcamp I was on, there was a guy that he ran away, even though he'd paid like $2,000 at the time or something. Uh, but yeah, like I think the dating boot camp is good because especially if you, if you have problems with talking to women and the anxiety around talking to women and what I, what I got from it really was just like that. I could just, that just, I could just walk up to people again and again and again and again, and it was fine. I think I did this one before I did my charity fundraising. So it, it did give me something quite a lot there. Yeah. Um, and after I did this, like I went back to my hometown and I went to the club and I had a completely different mindset about approaching. And I didn't, I think the major change was I just didn't waste time anymore. Like I, I wasted no time when it, I would just approach, then I'd approach and I'd approach until I got one I wanted. And, uh, yeah, I mean, these days I don't really approach in bars. Um, uh, but I think I've got it in here. This one. Yes. Um, yeah, that's the last one so i don't actually cover going to bars in here but i mean it's it's really like it's really incorporating this but i think the problem with doing bars on your own is it's a bit of a waste of time i think doing a boot camp is better so yeah so the next one like coaching and voluntary services like for me i found like coaching people in general is absolutely really really good for my social skills for my social anxiety and the simple reason for that is because you are literally having a connection with a real human being and you're thinking about what their needs are how how you can engage with them how can you how you can like be there for them and i think the same thing applies for volunteering so i think the thing about this is like the best way to get something out of it out of it is if it's if it's something you are actually leading it's an interaction with other people that you are leading. So in my case, you know, I did martial arts and then I used to run a Tai Chi class. I would teach people martial arts. I was also a life coach. I was also a professional hypnotherapist. Uh, and now I'm doing this. Um, but yeah, so it, you could be other things. You could be a sports coach, a football coach. It could be anything where you're actually leading a group of people. Um, but just that, that, that actual activity of leading and, and coaching or just giving a service to people is absolutely huge for your social skills. It's huge for your social anxiety because it's the connection. It's the connection that you create with other people and learning to create that creation, that, that connection is, is where the anxiety goes away. It's where it dissipates because you realize that you're, you, you connect with yourself and your inner humanity and the expression of that to other people. So yeah, definitely recommend something like that. Now, again, similar thing here, like starting a YouTube channel or a TikTok talk channel or doing go to toastmasters meetings i mean that one sounds a bit different but really again it's kind of similar it's that you in order to have a successful youtube channel or a tiktok channel in order to get attention 
then you have to really put yourself in the mind of other people. And you might think that that's not good for social anxiety, but actually it really is because you've also got to be on the camera. You've got to be okay being on the camera. And when you start off, you just really wooden and you have no idea what you're doing and you can't be yourself. Um, but it's, it's, and it takes work. It's really hard. It's not easy running a channel or anything like that. It takes a lot of effort and time and thinking. But yeah, it will have a huge effect on your on your social anxiety, a huge effect on your social skills, absolutely guaranteed, I promise you. So yeah, consider doing that. Uh, and yeah, the last one uh, is, is going to nightclubs for dancing, not for dating, not for pickup. So what I mean by this simply is I don't think a lot of people do this anymore. And it's just so important. Like granted, even I don't really do it anymore. And I wish I, I, wish I did because I used to do it all the time. I used to go to nightclubs. I used to love music. I used to just go and dance in the, the dance clubs uh, on a regular basis every weekend. And I think uh, it, was, it was last year I, or maybe the year before I went to a festival. And they had like dub music, which is quite big in the UK, just big bass and everything. And you can just lose yourself. Now, everyone around me was on drugs, but I wasn't. I wasn't on anything, but I didn't need to be because I was just allowed myself to just get lost in the music. And the fact that I was surrounded by people, it just didn't matter because I was not there for the people. I was there to connect with myself, to connect with the environment and just listen and harmonize. And that's what music does for you. I think the action of moving is so incredibly important for social anxiety. I don't think people make this connection enough that movement, physical movement, frees your mind. It frees up your mind. It frees up your anxiety. So yeah, definitely, if you're not going out dancing in your life, if it's not a part of your life, do make it a part of your life. I should. I, I want to follow this advice myself now. I want to go. It's a Friday night here. I'm going to go after this. I should do it. Um, Okay, so those are seven strategies, um, and I hope some of them were useful. Please do try some of them. Please do them, because I know some of them seem full on, but I, I guarantee these are the top things that I've learned over the last, uh, the things out of the things I've done over the last 20, almost 20 years, those seven completely radically changed everything for me, completely and utterly, like you cannot go back. Uh, and you should you should try that you should try it for sure and if you need help doing it then you can get on a call with me we can talk about any of the anxiety issues that you have any dating issues you have any performance issues you have sexuality and energy i cover all of it but also i want you to subscribe to my channel i've started making videos again and i'm going to do more of them so you need to be in tune with me because I'm going to be on your ass making sure that you're getting better like me. I want us to grow together. Anyway, thank you for this. I'll see you on the next one.